association with the Toronto Blue Jays. The Blue Jays trying to win a series. Powers of all the left field. It's out of here. It is gone. You cannot keep Bo Bichette down very long. Jansen smokes of all the left. It's over his head. Here comes Springer. Here comes Guerrero. Here comes Chapman. A bases clearing double for Danny Jansen. I'm getting jacked. I'm breaking myself. I can't believe they taking more in 12. The Taylor. Pokes one right side off Guerrero. Here comes the tie and run. Can't give teams extra outs. You got a forward lead in the ninth, and you want to put that one in the bag. Deep center field. Kimmer is back. It's ballgame. A thrilling win. The Blue Jays have had some tough losses, but this might be the capital. Now, these guys played hard. That was a good game. We'll flush it and get ready to roll tomorrow. If you know like I know, you don't want to step to this. It's the cheap on camera, bumped out with a gangster twist. The Blue Jays suffered a soul-crushing defeat in Los Angeles last night, but the beauty of baseball is that you often get to play the next day, and that is the case today here on Sportsnet. To the broadcast booth we go. Dan Schulman is with Buck Martinez. Jamie, five games so far in this road trip. All five have been decided by one run. The Blue Jays have lost three of them. They all count the same, but they don't all feel the same. And last night was a really tough loss for the Blue Jays. Well, it sure was, Dan, especially the fact that you have a quick turnaround and play a day game today. But the Blue Jays had a lead going into the bottom of the ninth inning, and the Dodgers stormed back. Will Smith hits a tough hop for Chapman. It goes off his shoulder, and he would end up at first base with an infield single. But this was the play of the game in my mind. Chris Taylor hits a ground ball off Laddie's glove, and Santiago Espinal, the second baseman, didn't pay attention to Will Smith, who was running from second. You can see the hesitation right there, and then all of a sudden he realizes Smith's going to try to score. He slides in with a tying run. That would push the game to extra innings. The Blue Jays had a chance to score Kevin Kiermaier trying to score from second base on a base hit by Bo. Mookie Betts throws him out. And then the backbreaker. James Oddman, who's had a good series against the Blue Jays, hits one off the top of the wall for a game-winning double, and that was a heartbreaking loss for the Blue Jays. They didn't have Jordan Romano to pitch the ninth, and it was a tough one because Eric Swanson has been so good, but lately he hasn't had that real good splitter, and that's cost him some tough games. So you have to turn the page. you got a day game tomorrow. A win today makes it a 3-3 three and three trip. What do the Blue Jays have to change or do better to start winning some of these close games? Well, there's a couple things I think they have to do better. First and foremost, Foremost, they have to change their approach with runners in scoring position. They've hit into seven double plays in the five games on this series, and everybody seems to have the same swing. If they do get hits, most of those hits are singles in those situations. So you've got to be better in run-producing situations, and I think the bullpen has been good, but I think it's pitching too much lately. The best part of their rotation right now is the depth of their starting rotation. So you've got to push them a little bit deeper. I know they have pitched a lot of innings this year, but they're throwing the ball very well right now. I would push them, especially the guy that starts today. You say Kikuchi, he was terrific in his last start against Seattle. He's got to go deeper into this game, and the Blue Jays need this win. And Jamie, when they get home, some really important games coming with the Angels and Orioles, then back on the road to the Reds Sox all of these games matter a tremendous amount the Blue Jays try to find a way to beat the Dodgers win the series and head home in a good mood. All right gentlemen this should be fun and Madison you heard Buck there he was uh, quite emotional about the things that the Blue Jays need to change he mentioned uh, improve their approach with runners in scoring position give us some perspective on how to avoid the kind of thing we witnessed last night. <laughs> well, there's no doubt that the players are going to be frustrated, but I think focusing, especially up at the plate, on one specific pitch that you want to go up there and hit can simplify your game plan in those situations. Oftentimes, when runners get into scoring position, you see them swinging at pitches down in the zone, maybe over swinging to try to get the ball out of the park. But if you can simplify things, just look for one pitch in that moment, that's going to help them today. Kike Hernandez back in a Dodger uniform and starting today. 
against Yusei Kikuchi, who was excellent in the road trip opener in Seattle. Let's see if he is at Dodger Stadium. First pitch is next. That's the locker inner. The locker inner? He's the guy who... P.K. Hernandez is back. They just picked him up from the Boston Red Sox in a deal, and he is in the lineup and playing second base here this afternoon on this hot, hot afternoon in L.A. A look at the starting lineup for the Blue Jays includes, of course, Bo Bichette, who had four hits, including a home run in last night's game. Danny Jansen will do the catching. No Kevin Kiermeyer today, so Dalton Varsho is in center. Kevin Biggio getting a start at second base and hitting in the nine spot against Dodgers right hander Tony Gonsolin. Gonsolin's had a bit of a rough go lately as his ERA is almost seven over his last six starts, but for the year it's still under four and he's making just his 16th start. He had an ankle sprain early in the spring and that's why his starts are down a little bit, but he's coming off a terrific season a year ago, one of the most dominant pitchers and he's always been a high win percentage pitcher. But he is a tough guy. He'll throw a fastball, curveball, slider, and a very good split finger pitch. His fastball is not overpowering, but he's had trouble after the first inning establishing that fastball. But in the first inning, he has a lot of success with his heater. Yeah, good early. Second time through the order, not as good. But overall, the numbers are fairly strong for Tony Gonsolin as George Springer is back in the lineup after not starting last night. He's out in right field. George having a tough time on the road trip. He is one for 18 out here. The day off seemed to energize Bo Bichette last night. We'll see if it does the same for Springer today. Only two Blue Jays in this lineup have faced Tony Gonsolin. Brandon Belt's 0 for 2, and Dalton Varsha is 2 for 14. That's it. And a swing and a miss by Springer, 1 and 2. Too far down and away. Two and two now on Springer with Bichette and Belt still to come here this afternoon in the top of the first inning. Blue Jays winning six to three in 11 on a Monday night and then the eight to seven loss last night in 10 innings after they took a seven to three lead to the ninth. Thanks in part to what that guy did with the bat last night. But in the end it wasn't enough. Three two is bounced down to third and Springer retired by Muncie one down. Well we mentioned Bo had a big night last night and he had had an 0 for he was 0 for 18 when he stepped to the plate in the first inning gets a base hit the left field on a breaking ball and then Reyes hung a curve by to him and he hit the side of the ballpark for his 16th home run 17th home run and then to finish up this base hit came in the ninth inning and Kevin Kiermaier would be thrown out. Actually, it was in the 10th inning when he got that fourth hit. And he grounds the first pitch he sees over the mound and out to Kike Hernandez, who will get another ovation for making that play as the Dodger fans are excited to have him back. Spent six years with the Dodgers and had a pretty good run, and you can bet he didn't waste any time getting here to L.A. after he heard the news he'd been traded back to L.A. He has played with Houston, Miami, the Dodgers and Boston and he's now back to the place where he's played the most games. So a couple of quick outs for Gonsolin and here's Brandon Belt. Who hit a home run in the Monday game. Last night it went 0 for 3 had a sack fly 0 for 2 rather had a sack fly and a walk as well. And that's a called strike. This game is a big gut check game for the Blue Jays after yeah. that tough loss last night. They need to win this game. They've got an off day tomorrow before 17 straight games that start on Friday. And you can't feel sorry for yourself. You have no time to for that. You got to dig in and make sure you give your best effort and win this game. And that would end up with a three and three road trip. And given the way they have lost some tough ones, that wouldn't be so bad. Well, I would think this is when your your leadership group really matters, right? To make sure that everybody understands, you got to turn the page. And baseball players are uniquely capable of turning the page quickly, by because they play games every day. But this does feel like a big one for them after what happened last night. 
No, I agree with you. Yeah, it's hot, and they played late into the night, and it's a day game, and you know the Dodgers are going through the same thing. So you just got to dig in and just give yourself a real test. You need to win this one. West Coast trips are tough. 3 2, top to first. And it'll be a quiet top of the first. Three ground ball outs for the Blue Jays here against Tony Gonsolin. The National League West by four games over both the Diamondbacks and the Giants. And a look at their lineup. It begins, as always, with Mookie Betts, who is having a great year and a great stretch. J.D. Martinez has moved up to the three spot. No Will Smith in the game today. The light hitting Austin Barnes gets a start behind the plate, hitting in the nine spot. As you say, Kikuchi gets the call this afternoon for the Blue Jays. Making his 21st start of the season, his 12th start on the road, and he was terrific last time out against Seattle. Through just 78 pitches, and he had a good fastball, a very good curveball, and his slider was as good as ever. He needs to get that fastball in the zone against this Dodger lineup. And he misses just down and away with a fastball for ball one to Betts. What an MVP with the Red Sox back in 2018. He's been a perennial All Star really most of his career, and certainly since he has come to the Dodgers. One of the great players in the game, and also one of the great ambassadors for the sport as a whole. No question about it. And he has played second base last night. He started at second base, but then did a great throw from right field later on in the game in the 10th inning. Something going on now with Mookie Betts and Kikuchi, whether or not, I don't know what Betts is concerned about right now, whether or not he didn't get set and Kikuchi started his delivery or what. Check it out. And the 1 1 breaking ball lines softly into right for a leadoff base hit. So Betts is aboard, and here comes Freddie Freeman, who launched a home run in his first at bat of the game a night ago. Yeah, he's already matched his home run output from a year ago, and he didn't miss this one. First inning. And a deep ball into the seats in deep center field, way back up there, over 400 feet away from home plate. And for Freeman, that was his 21st of the season. He's got 71 RBIs. He just continues to be one of the best hitters in baseball. And he hits lefties as well as he hits righties as he takes inside ball one. Another guy who won an MVP did it with Atlanta in the COVID shortened season of back in 2020 and both he and Betts are in the conversation this year with a couple of months to go. And that's in there it's one and one. Uh, that's his slider and his slider has been very consistent. And he added dimension this year that served him so well as bringing into the mix that curveball gives him a little separation that's you breaking pitches in velocity. Bets the lead not going and Freeman takes called strike two. Yeah the the split change whatever you want to call it is not nearly the factor this year that it was a year ago for Kikuchi but the curveball is a much bigger factor to kind of balance it out. And a quarter of the pitches he threw against the Mariners last time out were curveballs and that's a good number for him where he can get that in there. It's just a little bit slower than his slider. It's got a bigger break, and it gives the hitter something else to think about. Foul back. Good fastball right on the inside corner. He was up over 97 a lot in his outing last time out. 97 with the fastball, and came out of the game after just 78 pitches. Gonna have to push him a little bit deeper if he is that effective this afternoon. And some tired arms in the bullpen. As Freeman lines one into left, and that's a base hit. And the first two men have reached here in the bottom of the first. Well, Dan, you talked about the top two in this Dodger lineup and how effective they are. They started this series with a double and a single on Monday night, and right here, back to back base hits to start this ball game this afternoon. That's what makes Freddie Freeman so good. He can hit the ball all over the ballpark. It's two strikes, cuts his swing down, puts the bat on the ball, and pushes Mookie Betts down to second. 
So now J.D. Martinez up into the three spot 263 25 home runs on the season including one in the eighth inning of last night's game. Kikuchi drops in a curveball at the top of the zone for a called strike. It's hard to keep track of who used to be with the Red Sox and is now a Dodger <laughs> and who used to be with the Dodgers and is now a Red Sox or maybe came back to the Dodgers. But remember, Justin Turner is with the Red Sox and Kike Hernandez is now back here. Of course, JD Martinez, a long run with Boston before this year. Yeah, J.D. Martinez who was actually released by the Astros and quickly the Tigers picked him up and that's when he became more of an offensive threat. He got a chance to play in Detroit and then of course moved on to Boston and was a big part of their offense and their success. Well Kikuchi way out in front 0 2 also Martinez a big time double play candidate if you can get him to hit the ball on the ground. What a swing and a miss. Kikuchi will take that. Gets him with the curve for the first out. Yeah, he did a good job in that at bat, introducing the curveball. Uh, he had J.D. Martinez waving at that pitch for the first out of the inning. And he's got good depth on this curveball. And you can see just 80 miles an hour, and that's a lot slower than his slider, which will be 86, 87. Good pitch. And he got it down in a good spot. So now Chris Taylor with a lefty on the mound Taylor elevated up to the cleanup spot not where you typically associate him usually hits a little bit lower in the order 212 with a dozen home runs. So now with Taylor and Kike Hernandez reunited again here in L.A. Dave Roberts has all the versatility you could ever ask for defensively. That misses inside of the belt for ball one. Yeah, man, I was a little surprised Taylor's hitting cleanup, but this is the 11th time he is hitting the cleanup spot this season, and Dave Roberts is comfortable using him anywhere, not only in the lineup, but all over the field defensively. And a swing and a miss. Good smother there by Danny Jansen to keep it in front of him. You know, one thing that has really improved for you, say Kikuchi, is his ability to strand base runners. He has stranded more base runners at a higher percentage than anybody in baseball except Blake Snell. He's done a real good job, and there's a number we were talking about 84.3% strand rate, second in the majors to Blake Snell. So he's done his best work in big spots with runners in scoring position. As this one has hit a ton, but a ton foul too, off the facing of the upper deck down the left field line. It looks like Kikuchi lost his pitch count out of his hat. He just had to reposition it inside the lining of his cap. Two on one out and a ball and two strikes to count on Taylor. And a swing and a miss. Got him with a fastball up, two down. Boy, again, the mix of his pitch is very effective. And that fastball up at 96, enough to get the strikeout. So back to back strikeouts after back to back singles. Jansen wants it up and Kikuchi delivers. You can see after seeing a couple of breaking balls in that at bat, Taylor is way late on that heater. So two down and here's Max Muncy. And a ground ball to second. Up with it Biggio and how about you say Kikuchi after a couple of hits he gets three straight outs and strands a couple of runners here in the bottom of the first. Download the Bet365 app and check out the latest odds for today's baseball games. Here at Dodger Stadium, final game of the series, final game of the road trip for the Blue Jays. Dan Schulman, Buck Martinez, Arden Zwelling, who is down in the camera well just beyond the Blue Jays dugout on a day that is 33 degrees Celsius, 92 degrees Fahrenheit, with hardly a cloud in the sky. It is a steamy one here this afternoon. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. leading it off against Tony Gonsolin here in the top of the second. Laddie two for nine with an RBI so far in the series both hit singles. The 
Gonsolin doesn't give up many hits at all on either the fastball or the splitter. The opposition in the 150s on both of them. That looked like a slider there, and the slider and the curve both get hit more, and Guerrero lines it softly into left for a base hit. Yeah, Blatty was out in front a little bit on this base hit, but he's so strong and hits it so hard, he lined it in front of the left fielder, Taylor. See how he reaches for it and has to extend out over the outside part of the plate and gets the leadoff single here in the second. First base runner for the Blue Jays. And that brings up Matt Chapman. It was two for eight, including a home run so far in the series. John Schneider talked about some getting some of the regulars a little bit of time off. Bo Bichette didn't start Monday night. George Springer didn't start last night. Kevin Kiermeyer is not starting today. But Chapman and Guerrero, the two guys, two the other two guys who play almost all the time, they are in there. You you can only give so many guys time off. You've got to keep as many of your top players in there as possible. Every game means so much. And there is an off day tomorrow. Man, the lineup might have been a little bit different had the Blue Jays won last night. But given the fact they lost and they're trying to salvage a split of the six games on this road trip, they must Chappie and Gladdy to stay in the lineup and see if you can't come up with a W here this afternoon. And the game's coming as we talked about. They all mean a lot, but the Angels are coming to town. The Angels are just three and a half back of the Blue Jays. Then the Orioles are coming to town as the Jays get back into their division. And then when they go out on the road again, the first stop is Fenway Park, another team that is very close to the Blue Jays in the standings. And as Chapman thought he had drawn a walk, but it's strike two and it's a full count. Now some of those teams are getting healthy. Mike Trout is traveling now with the Angels and he's close to start swinging a bat. He had that hammock bone surgery as has him on the I.L. Chapman with a drive to deep center field and it's off the base of the wall. Guerrero's on his way to third and Chapman into second with his 32nd double on the season. That's his sixth extra base hit in his last 13 games. Uh, he hammered that ball. That ball was right at the base of the fence in deep center field. And Chapman starting to hit the ball with authority once again. He's had a good run over those last couple of weeks. It's a high fastball just an up and out over the plate. And at a nice velocity for hitting. It's 93 miles an hour. It's not 97, 98 upstairs. And Chapman punished it. Chapman is the American League leader in doubles has been seemingly all season and a great early opportunity here for the Blue Jays second and third nobody out Whit Merrifield is the batter infield is back for the Dodgers and yeah there are guys struggling with runners in scoring position but Merrifield a, a good candidate putting the ball in play at least getting one of these runs in. And he lifts that one to right center field. Is it deep enough? Guerrero will tag, and here he comes, and he will score. Chapman on his way to third, and he's out. So Chapman was obviously banking on the throw not getting cut and going through to the plate, and Matt Chapman is slow to get up as well. Yeah, he sure is. He had a very aggressive slide. Looks like he's favoring his left arm. As he jumps off the field, and but Mayfield, he did his job. That's what we were talking about in the open. Change your approach, and he hits a lazy fly ball to right center, deep enough for the sack fly. But Matt Chapman challenging the Dodgers to make a play, and they do. Betty Freeman cut the ball off early in the game. You just take outs, and he got the out at third base. Well, Mayfield did a good job of hitting this fly ball into right center. Altman's got a strong arm. We've seen that throughout these games. And he hits the cutoff man. And Freeman throws to Max Muncy to put the tag on Chapman. So a sack fly for Merrifield. And Chapman out 8-3-5 trying to take third. So it's two outs nobody on. But the Blue Jays have the early one to nothing lead. And the batter is Dalton Varsho, who's in center field today with Kevin Kiermeyer not on the starting lineup. And maybe Varsho's biggest moment of the season a couple of nights ago, the two run double in the 11th inning. In a game the Blue Jays won 6 to 3. 
Of the five games on this road trip, four have been decided by one run, and the other went 11 innings. So every single game has been close on this road trip. Yeah, and Varsher had the big hit on Monday night, and Danny Jensen got a big hit in the ninth inning in last night's game, but we just couldn't make that one stand up. And Varsho takes a walk. Number nine, Danny Jansen. With Gonsolin on the mound this year, opposing base dealers are seven for eight. With Austin Barnes catching, opposing base dealers have been successful 91% of the time, 50 for 55. The Dodgers have had a lot of trouble, as we told you a couple of nights ago, controlling the running game. Varsho can steal a base. Of course, Jansen can drive a guy in. 44 RBIs on the season and really hasn't played nearly as much as some of the other guys on the team. But boy, has he been productive in big spots. Yeah, he sure has, in particular in late game situations like this three run double in last night's game that came in the ninth inning. 11 extra base hits and 18 RBIs in the last month of games. And this one well hit to center. But Outman has room right in front of the warning track to make the catch and retire the side. The Blue Jays get the first run of the afternoon. Ready for Kike Hernandez, a very, very popular guy here in his first stint with the Dodgers. Today begins his second stint with the Dodgers. He can play all over the field. He was with them from 2015 through 2020. Playing any position that was required of him. You know, a good player, not a great player, but a very versatile guy, a big personality, and again, really, really popular with the Dodger fans. Yeah, he actually played for Don Mattingly in 2015. Mattingly was the skipper. That was his last of five years at the helm of the Dodgers. And here's Keith Hernandez returning to LA. First time Kike Hernandez was here, he wore number 14. But since he went to Boston, that number was retired for Gil Hodges. So Hernandez is number eight here in his return to the Dodgers. You know, one thing he has done, and that's why he is such a fan favorite. He played in 16 postseason series and hit 13 home runs and threw 69 batting average during his postseason. And, and you're right. He's one of those guys that it's not going to be a star. He's not going to change a team. But boy, he's a heck of a complimentary player. Can steal your base from time to time. Play in the outfield. Play in the infield. Balances them a little bit more. The Dodgers were looking for a right-handed bat, not necessarily in a full-time role, but against lefties coming off the bench, and that's what Kike Hernandez can do. Slider is in there, a full count. Again, a hot day. It's in the 90s. You say Kikuchi gave up hits to Betts and Freeman to start the first, but then struck out Martinez, struck out Taylor, got Muncie to ground out. And the ground ball weakly hit to short, charging Bichette, and dug out nicely by Guerrero, one down. Well every team likes to get ready for the game in their own way and with Kike Hernandez being back he it looks like well, I don't know if he was nominated or just took it upon himself to to lead the charge. He's overcome his shyness it appears in being back with his team. So, Absolutely. Yeah. He's got a big time personality does, and they're yeah. happy to have him back. And here's another guy now who is quickly becoming as popular as Kike Hernandez was over the years here in L.A. And that's the rookie outfielder James Outman. It was Outman who hit the ball off the top of the fence for the game winning RBI double in the 10th inning last night. 
reached base in all five of his plate appearances in that game. He had two singles and the game winning double. He also walked twice. Good looking player. First time we've had a chance to see him in person. Last seven games, he's hit nearly 350. The 1 1 from Kikuchi. There's a slider lined into right center, and that's a base hit. Jose Cuervo Tradicional, made with 100% agave for over 250 years. As we mentioned, they commemorate so many things so well here at Dodger Stadium. We are actually broadcasting this game from the Vin Scully press boxes, uh, as well it should be called, and all kinds of pictures and memories uh, of the best who ever did it, has ever done it, will ever do it. Vin Scully, it's all over the place here at Dodger Stadium. Yeah, the street leading up to this ballpark is Vin Scully Lane, and he was a big part of this organization. Started in Brooklyn, came out here with the Dodgers in '58. Think about that. Started in Brooklyn. <laughs> so he did, I think, 60, yeah, 67 60, years, yeah. I believe, between Brooklyn and Los Angeles. Miguel Rojas, the shortstop, is up with a runner at first, one out. And as Kikuchi misses up and away with a fastball. It has been a good year for Yusei Kikuchi. The ERA was 525 a year ago. It came into the game today at 392. Fly ball to left field, going back and making the catch. Whit Merrifield and gets it back into the infield, forcing Outman back to first. Yeah, Whit made a terrific running catch late in the game last night in the. Actually, it was in the fourth inning off Mookie Betts as Betts made a bid for an extra base hit with two outs. He ran it down in a very similar spot in left field. Well, he's played well, whether it's left field or second base. And I think he's probably played a lot more games than we anticipated at the start of spring training just because he's been swinging the bat so well. So now Austin Barnes. Who again isn't playing a whole lot and, and he's been a good use of very useful player for the Dodgers over the years but he is having a tough time both swinging the bat and behind the plate his biggest role is generally he catches Clayton Kershaw but Kershaw has been on the I.L. for a few weeks and is still a couple of weeks away but Barnes comes into this at bat hitting 104 11 for 106 on the season with just two extra base hits both doubles. And those numbers have been replicated over the last eight games, eight strikeouts in his last 25 at bats. Oh, two. So good news for the Blue Jays in that Will Smith is not in there today. That weakens the Dodger lineup to a certain extent, but they are still a very dangerous and potent team offensively. That's off the glove of Biggio and into shallow right. That'll be a base hit for Barnes. Yeah, Kevin Biggio got fooled on the angle of this ball. He jumped a little bit early and then he was coming down and just tipped off his glove. It wasn't hit that hard. Kind of a change up line drive, if you will. But watch his jump. He jumps and he's on his way down when the ball hits his glove and he kind of mistimed it. And Alpin has to stop it second. Just barely got a piece of it. Barnes picks up a hit, his 12th hit of the season. So now first and second with two down, and back to the top of the order for Mookie Betts, who had a base hit to right his first time up. It's four hits now for the Dodgers, all singles. Kikuchi pitched around them in the first, and now trying to do the same with two outs here in the second. Now 
And again this is one of the these games for everybody but I would think mostly for the pitcher and the catcher where the heat is a factor. Danny Jansen talked about it. I mean a catcher buck can lose like seven or eight pounds on a day in this kind of a situation. Right? Easy. Yeah and obviously having played in Kansas City on the artificial turf in the middle of the summer sometimes it gets up into double digits. Three and one on bets with a couple of men on already and Freddie Freeman in the on deck circle. Outman the lead at second Barnes the runner at first. And a swing and a miss a full count now on Mookie Betts which means that both runners will be on the move. Like Guerrero signaling to the rest of the infielders, reminding them that everybody's going to be running. Big early pitch in this ball game for Yusei Kikuchi. Here they go, and it's grounded foul. Now we mentioned that Yusei has done a pretty good job all season long, leaving base runners on base, and been very consistent with two outs. He has kind of a knack for getting out of these tough situations. It's walking a tightrope oftentimes, but this season he's been pretty good at getting out of it. The 3 2 again, and he missed high. He walks bets, and that's going to load them up for Freddie Freeman. Danny Jansen with a very timely trip to the mound right now to help you say catch his breath another extended inning tough situations and he's been throwing some pressurized pitches early in this game. Well, the Dodgers left two on in the first inning they got the bases loaded with two outs here in the second inning and you say has put himself in a tough spot with that two out walk. Freeman with a base hit to left field in his first at bat. Fouls this one back into the screen. It's 0 1. If you were to pick a spot to try to pitch Freddie Freeman, I think it'd be built high, inner half of the plate with good velocity. He's got kind of a down swing. He covers the outside half very well, he covers the inside half down. But if I were going to pitch him, I'd stay up with velocity on the inner half of the plate, especially with Kikuchi's heater. And now he's established that good fastball at 97, and his slider has been a wipeout pitch. He can use that right now. No two, and he got him. What a job again by Kikuchi. A couple of hits and a walk to load him, but he strikes out Freddie Freeman to strand them. And it's time for legendary Games are coming, including the first place Baltimore Orioles coming to the Rogers Center for a series that begins on Monday. Four game series. It's a day game on the Thursday. Don't miss out on a minute of the action. Get yours at bluejays.com slash tickets. So we know that Hyunjin Ryu is not starting in the Angels series. The Blue Jays have announced their starting pitchers for that series. So that we don't know for sure that that means Hyunjin Ryu is starting in the Orioles series. He um, was expected to throw a, a side session or a bullpen today here at Dodger Stadium, but it was after we met with John Schneider as Kevin Biggio sends the first pitch deep but foul down the line. So they were going to have Ryu throw here in front of a, a bunch of watchful sets of eyes and then determine how he's doing and then make the next step. But it is certainly possible that Hyunjin Ryu will start in that Baltimore series. And it feels like Bucket it obviously has to do with how Ryu is feeling that is the most important thing but there are a lot of moving parts and one of them may be the trade deadline opening up a roster spot etc cetera, etc cetera. can go a lot of different ways. Yeah I think uh, 
I get the feeling he's going to start in the Baltimore series. Just the way he's here, he, he feels great. He's thrown well, 85 pitches in his last Triple A start. So I don't see any reason for them not to use him. But they could have a different feeling about it. And Biggio gets hit by that pitch down and in, just didn't do any damage. Hit him in the foot. He's all right as he jogs down to first. Number four, George Springer. And again, that's Mark Butzinski giving Cabot information about how quick Gonsolin is to the plate and what Barnes's arm is like. George Springer up for the second time, grounded out to third to begin the ball game. And looks at a strike. It sure feels like almost every pitch that the Dodgers are throwing to George Springer is designed to be away from him. Yeah. And it's interesting because the defense is set up leaving a gapping hole, a gaping hole on the right side. Big gap over there. And he's popped this one up. It's a tricky day with the sun, and it's the center fielder, Outman, who makes the catch. Kike Hernandez never had any idea where it was. But fortunately for him and the Dodgers, Outman was close enough to it that he made the catch. Oh, I think Kiki knew where it was. He just didn't want any part of it. You can see that son they're having to deal with. And Outman, he's shown me a lot in this series. Watch the center fielder take charge. He calls for it, and that gets the Mookie Betts right fielder out of the equation. And Outman makes a nice running catch. He had to go a long way to get that. So one down, here's Bo Bichette. Well, grounded out his first time up. One nothing Blue Jays on the sack fly by Whit Merrifield in the top of the second. It's actually the Dodgers who have had more opportunities so far in this game, but you see Kikuchi's pitched out of it, and it's now two and zero on Bichette. You know, back in the day, and you know this, so I'm I'm leading this to you. We talk about the heat. Back in the day, there were double headers too, like <laughs> Sunday double headers. You'd play two games in this kind of weather sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was uh, just something you had to deal with. And you know, you can really talk yourself into a bad afternoon. You just have to deal with it. I mean, it's hot. A lot of these guys grew up in Southern California. And they played in this heat their whole life. So yeah, it's uncomfortable, but at the same time, both teams are dealing with the same. Issues. Three balls and a strike on Bichette. Gonsolin in his fifth year. He's been hampered by injuries. Some Buck told you about the ankle at the beginning of this year, but he's got a 283 career ERA in 74 appearances. As Bichette lines one into left, and that's a base hit. And that'll push Biggio up to second. Yeah, Bo's getting back to that smooth, sweet swing we've seen so often. And this pitch just kind of out over the plate and right on the outside corner, but he hooks it into left field. Another good at bat for Bo Bichette. His fifth hit in the last two games. So now Brandon Belt, who grounded out to first in his first A.B. today. He swings through a fastball 0 and 1. You mentioned a good ERA. That's not in his fashion through this point of his career. He's also had a terrific one loss record 31 and 9. The highest win percentage of pitchers that have thrown at least 350 innings. He's tended to get a lot of run support when he's been out there as belt lines one or grounds one into right field for a base hit. Biggio is getting the wave. The throw from Betts is not in time and Biggio slides in with the second Blue Jay run of the afternoon. Well, Brandon Belt hit it sharply on the ground and it gets through the infield and Gavin got a good break from second base and he scores ahead of the throw. Well, you mentioned that the Dodgers have had more opportunities, but the Blue Jays strike early. That breaking ball, that might have been a splitter that just moved away from Belt, and he's able to hook it into right field. 
Tavin got hit by a pitch and he comes in to score from second base. So it's two to nothing. And here's Vladimir Guerrero Jr. who had a base hit and scored a run his first time up. Shed at second, belts at first. And it's inside, a ball and a strike on Vladdy. You can see Gonsolin rubbing his hand on his pants. I would imagine uh, both he and Yusei Kikuchi are sweating like crazy out there today. Two and one. Yeah, and there's really no place on your uniform that's dry where you can wipe your hands off. And your shirt is wet, the pants are wet, and you just try to find a dry spot to get a good grip on the baseball, and you have to change your uniform a couple times during the day like today. Yeah, now three and one on Guerrero. Here's where Vladdy really has to narrow his focus. Just because it's a 3 1 count, you can't assume you're going to get a good pitch to hit. Just narrow your focus. Make sure it's something you can hit hard. You got a guy swinging the bat pretty well behind you, and Matt Chapman. He's already doubled today. And on the corner, 3 and 2. That's exactly what I meant. It wasn't the pitch he wanted to swing at, it was a borderline strike. Yeah, that was a pretty good take, and now Vladdy asked for time. Yeah, you don't want to swing at that pitch up and away. Just barely got the outside corner of hanging slider. Chapman next. The Blue Jays looking for a big inning here. A run in, two on with one out in the middle of the order up. A long hold by Gonsolin. Fouled off by Guerrero. And threw him a split right there. And Gonsolin's left some pitches up. His breaking ball to Vladi for a strike on the 3 1 pitch was up. That splitter was up. And you can see he's having trouble with the moisture. He grips that baseball in that split finger grip when he sets it in his glove. And then he makes the adjustment according to which pitch he's going to throw. And now Barnes asks for time. And we'll use a mound visit. Kike Hernandez is going to come in and get in on the conversation as well. Now, sometimes a catcher can sense some hesitation in the pitcher. Like, oh, maybe he's not really sure about this pitch. And I think that's a good move. Mark Pryor, the pitching coach, I'm sure appreciates that. You don't want to have any doubts in your pitcher's head as he's about ready to deliver a pivotal pitch. And this is a pivotal pitch, given the situation, given the hitter. Guerrero settles in. Gonsolin comes set. And the 3 2. And Vladdy takes strike three. He took a fastball that looked like it had a good piece of the plate, but he couldn't pull the trigger. Yeah, he had thrown him a slider, and then he got a hanging splitter that he fouled off, and he's probably thinking something other than a fastball, but Gonsolin makes a good pitch, catches plenty of the plate. Inside part of the play, you can see that's over the inside half of the play. Obviously, looking in a different spot or for something a little bit different as Matt Chapman comes up. Chapman with his 32nd double of the season, his first time up, and then a little bit later on was thrown out trying to advance from second to third on the Whit Merrifield sacrifice fly. This one popped up back out of play. Now we mentioned Chapman's on a pretty good run lately, and the double was his 32nd, as Dan mentioned. Getting on base regularly, he's been running the bases very well, and it was a little bit surprising that chose to get thrown out in that second inning. This 
especially early in the game you want to make sure 100 percent sure you can advance and Freddie Freeman cut the ball off and it's real from right field and they, they have Matty over at third base. Gonsolin ahead of him here one and two. And he takes it down and away two balls two strikes it certainly feels like at the plate Matt Chapman has really rounded back into form over the last couple of weeks hitting the ball to right field and his double went to deep center field stayed in a big part of the diamond. Two two. And that's low a full count and that means Bichette and Belt get a running start. With Merrifield next if Chapman can keep it going. And he'll take a walk. And that's going to load him up force Gonsolin to throw more pitches. Bring Mark Pryor out of the dugout as Whit Merrifield comes to the plate. Yeah, and the pitching coach for the Dodgers, Mark Pryor, understands, you know, he's thrown a lot of pitches this inning and it's hot. He wants to make sure that he gives him a little blow here. Helps him regroup a little bit. Again, Matt Chapman, he's been getting on base on a regular pace lately. Then he gets a big walk here, and that sets the table for Merrifield who had a sack fly his first time up. Witt's done such a great job, and obviously he has put up big numbers. He's one of 16 players since 1920 to have 85 or more homers, 445 or more RBIs, and 195 or more stolen bases. He and Trey Turner are the only mm -hmm. active players with those numbers. It's pretty good company to be in the same class with Trey Turner. Between the average, the doubles, the steals, you know, doing a lot of good things. Got fooled a bit there, and it's 0 1. Yeah, so, in his first at bat, he had a fly ball to right center with a man to third base. He had a good at bat, just knew he wanted to get something to the outfield. Bounce it off at its own two. This career game number 1001 for Whit Merrifield. We mentioned today would have been number 1000 for Kevin Kiermeyer. He was just one behind Whit, but Kiermeyer is not on the starting lineup. He could come in later, of course, and that would officially make it number 1000 for him, but he is sitting on 999 right now and trying to stay cool with no doubt that towel having been soaked in ice and cold water and whatever else he can find. And a swing and a miss. Gonsolin gets Merrifield. The Blue Jays will get one, but leave the bases loaded. They take a two to nothing lead to the bottom of the third. Kikuchi is about to begin his third inning, having thrown 43 pitches to 11 batters. And this is something that requires some monitoring because if there is ever a day when the Blue Jays need a deep start, it is today. Or if there's ever a pitcher who the Blue Jays have been reticent to let keep, get deep into games, it's Yusei Kikuchi. You're going to look at his last four starts here. You'll notice they all end right around the same spot. And in the final two starts, Kikuchi was cruising, but the Blue Jays stayed true to their process that they have stuck to all. All season long, there's typically a pocket right around that third, the middle of that third trip through where the Blue Jays get Kikuchi out in favor of a reliever. But today, Dan, it's hot. The Blue Jays have a taxed bullpen day game after a night game. Final day of a West Coast road trip. You have to wonder if John Schneider will be tempted to push Kikuchi a bit further beyond his comfort zone. Arden, thank you. It's interesting. There are factors on both sides. Day off tomorrow says, well, you can push your bullpen guys a little bit more because everybody gets a day off. Hot, hot day. Also, you worry about the starter a little bit more. But because the bullpen is taxed, to Arden's point, and you've already talked about it, Buck, do they try to push Kikuchi a little bit further, assuming things are going okay? because of the way things have gone for the bullpen in recent days. Yeah, And what they have done is they use projections and go back to the history of you say and they say OK well you know generally he gets hit gets tired or whatever later on fifth inning maybe third time through the or they've been pretty consistent in their thinking about that. I think there are times when you just have to trust your eyes and let your 
eyes tell you how well he is doing how dominant he is at that point of the ball game. Especially when you need some extra length and yeah I know it's hot and I know it's hard to push him but just watch what he's doing. Watch the quality of his pitches. Is he in the strike zone? Does he still have that great release point? Pete Walker's going to keep a close eye on him, and he'd love to see him pitch as deep as he can in this ball game today. It feels like the bullpen is in a little bit better shape today than last night because Jimmy Garcia, Trevor Richards, Jay Jackson, Jordan Romano, none of them pitched last night. That doesn't necessarily mean all of them are available, but you'd lean in that direction that those four guys should be available. Maybe Tim Mesa as well. You wouldn't think Genesis Cabrera is available. He's pitched twice in a row. There's a swing and a miss to get Martinez. Fourth strike after Kikuchi. And I would, you know, Eric Swanson might not be in play. He had a long, arduous inning last night, obviously through 28 pitches, but it looks like they've got four or five of their guys available. Yeah, and the Blue Jays, like most teams in the major leagues now, have certain parameters that they make these decisions with. How many times he's been up, how many pitches has he thrown during the course of his day, how well is he bouncing back, where's his release point, has he dropped down from that release point at any time? And John Snyder gets all of that information before the game. This guy is, is red, this guy is yellow, and this guy is green. You can use him, and they have just like a stop sign, stop light. Red is no go. Yellow, well, if you need him, and maybe in a short situation, in green is good to go. Like a couple of nights ago, Jordan Romano was definitely at best a yellow, but they eventually needed him in the 11th inning, and he came in. Chris Taylor just talked to uh, Ben May, the home plate umpire, as well. Mookie Betts did it earlier, and I think the Dodgers are maybe thinking that Kikuchi is coming set before the hitter is kind of locked in on the pitcher and that's the order it has to happen in the hitter settles in looks at the pitcher by eight seconds on the clock then the pitcher can come set. Well you say when he steps on the rubber he keeps his glove right by his belt and he doesn't make the move with his pitching hand until he comes set there. But sometimes the hitters will look out there and see his hand by his belt thinking he's already in his glove but that's not the case. Pitched here a couple of years ago the only other time he pitched at Dodger Stadium he was with Seattle then six and a third three earned runs struck out 11 in this ballpark. And he misses just high again the same spot and it is three and one now on Taylor. Good slider and a swing and a miss three and two. Well, He's got one of the best sliders in baseball and his slider is terrific. He just throws it for a lot of strikes he gets a very high percentage of strikes with that slider whether they're called or swinging. And he got him swinging at the slider again and that is five strikeouts now for Kikuchi. Yeah, over the last couple of years since the start of 2022, Kikuchi's slider gets more strikes than anybody in baseball, even the great Clayton Kershaw, the Dodgers. This slider percentage gets 73.4% strikes when he throws it, whether it's a called strike or a swing and miss. Now Max Muncy, the batter, he grounded out his first time up. That was with a couple of men on and two outs. The Dodgers left two men on in the first, left the bases loaded in the second. Just missed, but boy, you can see he is feeling very good about that slider in the early going. Clayton Kershaw through a side session last night. He's dealing with some shoulder discomfort, but he's always had one of the best sliders in baseball. Fastball in there at 96, and it's one and two. And boy, wouldn't an efficient inning be nice in this heat with the number of pitches he had to throw in the first couple of innings? Check swing, did not go. Well, CB Buckner said no swing. Danny Jansen had put the tag on Munson. He was headed toward the dugout. Looked to me like he might have. Gone around. Let's take a look from the side, and he does a good job. He checked his swing. Good call by the umpire. And 
fouled back as Muncie stays alive. I know Kikuchi has given up a lot of home runs. He hasn't given up a home run in his last two starts, but 22 for the season. But he's not a comfortable at bat. As he throws hard, he's got two breaking balls, and when he's in the zone, boy, he could be a very, very uncomfortable AB. And that time he went around. The call will be made at the plate by home plate umpire Ben May. You say Kikuchi just struck out the side in the bottom of the third. This is an early start, 12.05. Local time, but don't worry, it is still a Junior J Sunday. Kids 14 and under can kick off their Sundays before the gates even open with the outdoor program, and the activities will get started a little bit earlier this week, 10 o'clock, and run up until first pitch just afternoon. Grab yours at bluejays.com slash tickets. And just saw that uh, Shohei Otani, who had been expected to start Friday night, is now going to start tomorrow. The Angels have a doubleheader against the Tigers. They were rained out today. They got a doubleheader tomorrow, and this has evidently changed their pitching plan. So Otani will not be pitching against the Blue Jays on the weekend, from what we are seeing from Sam Blum, the Athletics right, the Athletics writer covering the Angels. It looks like Otani will now start Game One of a doubleheader tomorrow at Comerica Park in Detroit. That's kind of interesting. You know, he's scheduled to start Friday, and what would change? You're going to have to have two pitchers today's scheduled pitcher and the one that was scheduled for tomorrow, but they've switched up. Good news for the Blue Jays. And remember that Blue Jays series, that's of significance, great significance to the Angels because the Angels are three and a half back of the final playoff spot, and that final playoff spot is currently occupied by the Blue Jays. So that's a big series for the Angels. You know, there's a lot of speculation this time as whether or not he's going to trade Shohei Otani. And it was interesting we had a discussion down in the dugout, and the consensus was that the Angels wouldn't trade him, which is kind of interesting. I mean, what's it going to take for the Angels to trade him? I mean, you're going to have to have a big package of pretty special players, yeah. and not just prospects. You're going to have to have a couple of major league players and. Yeah, it's going to be tough to to make a trade. We'll count on Dalton Varsho. Well, again, if they come to Toronto and sweep, all of a sudden they are right in the hunt for that last playoff spot. So maybe they're kind of, you know, they're on the phone engaging their offers, but maybe they're kind of in a holding pattern until they get this through the series in Toronto on the weekend. No one's bounced foul. Yeah, and we mentioned Mike Trout. He is starting to travel with the Angels. He's close to being able to take batting practice, but he's still. Weeks away. Sounds like Judge is going to be activated soon. Yes, that is big news. Joel Sherman of the New York Post is reporting that Aaron Judge is going to be activated on Friday by the Yankees, barring any setbacks. So that is obviously an enormous boost for the Yankees, who have struggled offensively uh, from the time that Judge got hurt, which was here at Dodger Stadium. This is where he suffered the toe injury a couple of months ago. Trying to make a catch in deep right, crashed into that fence, and at the base of it, it's concrete. And he just banged his foot into the concrete and suffered a toe injury that's kept him out a couple of months. So that is good news for the Yankees, to say the least. And of course, they're just behind the Blue Jays as well. As Varsho draws a leadoff walk. A lot of teams involved in this, and a lot of teams the Blue Jays are going to be playing soon involved in this. Nine, they play the Red Sox soon. They play the Angels soon. Houston's starting to play better. Boston's starting to get healthy. Chris Sale, Corey Kluber, getting close to going out on rehab assignments, and Reese McGuire, their catcher as well. Varsho running. Maybe a hit and run there by the Blue Jays. Jansen fouled it back, and it's 0 1. Yeah, and, you know, Brown's a great. Base runner, base stealer, but I, it was a hit and run, Danny. Especially on the first pitch when you see a guy break and the hitter hits, you gotta believe it's a hit and run. There are three or four guys on the team the Blue Jays feel comfortable using the hit and run with, and Danny Jansen is definitely in that group. They're all right handed batters. The idea is the second baseman goes over to cover, and uh, the right handed batter just 
Hopefully hits it hard somewhere, but you got a whole half of the field to hit it through on the right side. They like Jansen there. They like Merrifield there. Sometimes Kirk, sometimes Espinal. Little chopper foul. But they don't do it very often. No. It's something that has just kind of disappeared from baseball in general. And, you know, it, because there's so much swing and miss in the game nowadays that they don't have many hitters in general around baseball that it shows putting the bat on the ball. O2 upstairs way up ball one to Jansen who hit a fly ball to center his first time up. Gonsolin with an elevated pitch count as well at 74 and still looking for his first out here in the fourth inning. Three walks and a hit batter haven't helped his cause. And the Dodgers bullpen isn't in much better shape than the Blue Jays bullpen. They've both been used a lot in this series so far. But they added a fresh arm today. They swapped out a left hander for a right hander in their bullpen. Tyson Miller, who was with the Brewers at the start of the season, in fact, they just acquired him in a trade with Milwaukee at the first two weeks of July. It's sometimes easier to do these things when you're the home team because your AAA affiliate is usually closer to where you are. Harder for a team like the Blue Jays to consider a move after a Tuesday night before a Wednesday day game on the West Coast. I mean, you got to do what you got to do. Remember, Tyler Heideman flew out here just in case Danny Jansen was unable to play on Monday night. But generally, obviously, easier to consider quick roster moves when your team is at home. And the Blue Jays benefiting from having Buffalo being so close to Toronto. Two and two now, the count on Jansen. And a swing and a miss. Gonsolin gets him for the first out of the inning. Bring the colors of the ballpark to your home with Beauty Tone Paint's Toronto Blue Jays collection. Only at Home Hardware and Building Centers. Here's how. We are here in L.A. and so much to see. We can see the mountains out in center field, even though it's so hot. Sometimes it gets so hazy, it's not easy to see them. But we can see them clearly here. There's very little breeze. Temperature in the mid 30s Celsius, low to mid 90s Fahrenheit. And then after the game tonight, the Blue Jays hopping back on the plane, heading home, and we'll start up with the Angels on Friday. Now in this kind of a situation if our shows running our shows running this is not a hit and run situation Kevin Vigio is not a, a guy they hit and run with. He might be free to swing at the pitch but he wouldn't be obligated to do it like it's a hit and run. Our show not going and Vigio takes a strike. Yeah and um, kind of bluffed like he was going it looked like he felt he had a poor jump so he took one step toward second and, and stopped. He's trying to figure out Gonsolin. Gonsolin didn't have much of a stop that last time. He came pretty quick to the plate. 80 pitches now through three and a third. Vigio hit by a pitch and scored his first time up. That was an inning ago. Came in on the Brandon Belt RBI single. Varsho not going. And a swing and a miss by Vigio. Back to back strikeouts for Gonsolin. Yeah, that splitter got Danny Jansen, and it looked like he went back to the same pitch to strike out Kevin Biggio. Watch the depth on that pitch. You can see it just drops out of the strike zone, and he gets the chase. So now George Springer, who is 0 for 2, a ground ball to third and a fly ball to center.
Not going. And Springer grounds another one down to third. They'll go the short way to force Varsho. And the Blue Jays are retired, leading the leadoff walk on. Mentioned the Blue Jays are coming to the end of this six game West Coast swing, and it has been quite an eventful one with three heartbreakers for the Blue Jays on the trip in which they lost by one run. We're going to show you them here Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. The Blue Jays had leads in the seventh inning or later in each of these games Friday, Saturday, and Tuesday, excuse me. And the Blue Jays' win probability on Friday was 84% in the eighth inning. On Saturday, it was 91% in the seventh inning. Last night, 98% eight in the ninth inning. So, what's going on here? Part of this is the randomness of baseball. You isolate three games from 162, you get some really odd results. But part of it is the back end of the Blue Jays' bullpen being pretty taxed. You've seen some really reliable relievers like Jordan Romano and Eric Swanson who have had hiccups in leverage. And part of it is the lack of execution, Dan, whether it's running the bases or awareness and urgency defensively. So it's a lot of different things Arden thank you and Buck you've talked about them so some of it is not scoring enough add on runs so that the high leverage guys don't have to get used uh, so they've been they've been worked too much and, and there will be blips and hiccups it's inevitable you know the other teams out there trying to no bullpen is perfect and the Blue Jay bullpen has been a good one this year but it just seems like every single game is such a grind right now to to get to the finish line and as a result. A lot of these relievers are, are on pace to throw more than they ever have. Yeah, and it's just the nature of the game. You have to adjust to what's going on with your particular team. And that's why I have kind of an issue with the win probability because it doesn't necessarily factor in the state of your bullpen at that point. You know, how well your pitchers are pitching. Maybe they're dominant. You know, prior to these last nine games, the Blue Jays had a terrific run with their bullpen. They were 7-1 and one out of their bullpen in the previous eight games with an ERA of 0.94. But then the next nine games, the bullpen ERA was 5.55. So you just never know where you are at the point of the season as to how you might have success. Biggio diving stop, throw to first, but not in time. Pulled Guerrero off the bag, and that'll be an infield hit for Kike Hernandez. Yeah, and Gavin was shaded up the middle about as far as he could go to his right, and he loved it, but he didn't have much of a chance to throw out Kike Hernandez. You can see where he is when he dives, and from his knee, makes the throw. Glad he does a good job of coming off the base and making sure that ball doesn't get past him. So now James Outman, who had a base hit to right his first time up. Single runs in the second and the third for the Blue Jays. The the hit for Kike Hernandez, the fifth of the afternoon for the Dodgers off Yusei Kikuchi. He has walked one and struck out six. And a swing and a miss here, one and one. Adman hit a slider into right field for his base hit back in the second inning. And Kikuchi left it on the inside part of the plate. It wasn't a good slider. Another fastball swung on and missed one and two. There just are very few left handed starters who throw the ball as hard as you say Kikuchi does consistently 95 96 with a fastball. And he got him another fastball that he swings through one down. Fans, the MLB Ballpark app will complete your next visit to the ballpark. Buy and manage game tickets, redeem offers, access exclusive content, and much more. Download the MLB Ballpark app today. Obviously a little bit different than Seattle in terms of the number of Blue Jay fans here, but we have met some very friendly folks here at the ballpark at our hotel. Walking around a little bit downtown. Throw the first and the runner back in easily. Some people have made a whole thing of it. They've gone to Seattle and then down to Los Angeles, seeing two ballparks in the same week. Yeah, obviously, two of the more beautiful ballparks in baseball, and they made sure once all in the West Coast, you might as well travel down to LA and watch this series. Bouncer to short. 
Shovel to second one. Biggio on to first. And they turn it. Miguel Rojas grounds into a double play. And that is four scoreless innings now for Yusei Kikuchi. Doing it with the strikeout, doing it with the ground ball as the Blue Jays turn two. Time baseball for you tomorrow. The Blue Jays aren't playing, so you can watch the Angels and the Tigers beginning at 1 o'clock Eastern time right here on Sportsnet. And given what we found out today, that's now Shohei Otani, right? He is starting the first game of what is now a doubleheader tomorrow in Detroit instead of starting uh, in Toronto. And Don Clemish of MLB.com has reported the, the reason Phil Nevin said is that they didn't want Otani to have to DH two games tomorrow and then pitch on Friday night. That it's too much in a, in a two day span or a day and a half span. So he will start one of the games tomorrow in Detroit instead of starting in Toronto. But obviously he's going to DH. He's going to hit in the games in Toronto. I think they should rest him. <laughs> <laughs> It would be the gentlemanly thing to do. Of course. Yeah. We want to make sure his workload isn't too much. <laughs> and the Blue Jays would just as soon he not hit against them. Well, what a season he's had. Huh? 36 home runs, I think. Up the middle, and that's a base hit into center for Bo Bichette to lead off the fifth. And Bo is now two for three on the heels of going four for six last night. Well, you know what? He can turn things around in a heartbeat. And watch this fluid swing here. And that ball was inside. You cannot get him out inside. I don't care who you are. You can see how he freed up his body, he opens up his hips a little bit, and just drops the barrel on that ball and hits it past the shortstop. What a hitter. You know, I saw Ralph Gard at the All-Star game in Seattle. Ralph was a guest of Dusty Baker's and they were teammates for a long time in Atlanta and I mentioned Bo Bichette and he just said a natural born hitter. And that's all he said. He said man he can hit. He's an old school hitter. Well, Ralph Gard could hit so he knows what he's talking about. Well, better than 300. Baseball too. Yeah. yeah he loves baseball and loves good players and he was very excited to talk about Bo Bichette. Brandon Belt one for two had an RBI single in his last at bat. Hits are now even at five apiece. The Blue Jays up two to nothing here in the top of the fifth. And who just got thrown out? John Schneider just got thrown out. It looks like. Nah, or is he pointing behind him else. and trying to figure out who was doing the talking? Yeah, and that's a pretty short fuse for me right there. And the home plate umpire threw somebody out, and I don't know who it is. Ben May. I mean, it, it wasn't much chirping from our perspective, but John Snyder is going to go back to the dugout and look like somebody other than Snyder has been thrown out. I'm not sure who. And John's still in the dugout. But this pitch was high and quite a bit high, and Baron DeBelt was surprised it was called a strike. And the umpire, umpire quickly heard something from the dugout, and then he turns and throws somebody out. We still don't know who it is. Well, Arden Swelling is down in the camera well. He's got a better view of it than we do, and he just texted me that it's Don Mattingly. So it looks like the bench coach Donnie Baseball is done for the afternoon. You know one thing that we used to have in my day a long time ago bench jockeys right bench jockeys yeah. that would sit there on the umpire in a situation like that a guy on the bench would say man if you could see as good as you could hear we wouldn't be having this problem <laughs> and they wouldn't throw them out. <laughs> oh, no, they wouldn't no. throw them out. Boy Don Mattingly is a very mild mannered individual but. He obviously said something that was the tipping point for Ben May, the home plate umpire. Well, he's as passionate about the hitters as yeah. Pete is about the pitchers. And you call a couple of pitches against their hitters or their pitchers, and they're going to stand up for him. Shallow right field, Mookie Betts coming in. Boy, he really circled around that one. The Sun may have been playing some tricks on him. One down. 
You could both win a VIP Blue Jays experience. To enter and for complete rules, visit BlueJays.com slash TDMVP Spotlight. So 2 nothing Blue Jays in the fifth, who are now evidently without their bench coach for the rest of the day. They've got a runner at first, one out for Vladimir Guerrero Jr., who had a single and scored in the second, and then in a big spot in the third, took strike three, called on a fastball that got a lot of the plate. It was inner half, but got a lot of the plate, and obviously he was looking away or looking soft or something like that. Bo almost took off for second. He had a pretty good feel and he made a step towards second and then the pitcher didn't deliver the pitch to home so he broke it down. Bo doesn't run nearly as much as he used to. He is three for six this year. A couple of years ago he had 25 stolen bases. Off speed and up and in. No damage done and it's one and one on Guerrero. Wouldn't you like to have a mic when Bo and Freeman are there? There's a pitch upstairs. But Bo and Freeman at first base, and you can bet they're talking hit. Man, you can hit. Well, I can't hit as good as you yet. I'd love to hear that conversation. Wow, nice pick by Freddie Freeman, saving his pitcher right there. Yeah, this was a tough one for a first baseman, and you can see how he squares up his body and then turns to the side and backhand that short hopper. That gets by him, Bo's going to end up at third. Not going. A swing and a miss by Guerrero. It's one and two. And Gonsolin has put that splitter and slider in Laddie's mind, and last time. Got him looking at a heater, and that time Bradley swung through that fastball. A little bit late on it. Splitter taken low, and it's two and two. Left hander Alex Vessia now throwing in the Dodger pen. And then Gonsolin's got an elevated pitch count. Look at that 97 through four and a third. Yeah, and he doesn't pitch deep into his pitch count very often. He averages about 80 pitches per outing. There's a base hit into right for Guerrero. Up to second goes Bichette. Well, Vladdy's two for three. Got a base hit to left back in the second and takes this one big hole on the right side. And boy, that was a good level swing as he. Pumps a fist, making his way to first base, and the Blue Jays now have six hits. Roddy has two, Bo has two. Chapman's got a double. And Brandon Belt had an RBI single. Mark, Pri Mark Pryor to the mound again. The double by Chapman's the only extra base hit that either team has here today. So both of them, Bucket, but kind of going station to station all day so far. Yeah, and nobody's really got into ball. Ball carries really well here in the daytime, and we haven't seen. Anything but the Chapman double as far as extra base hits. And here is Chapman. The Blue Jays have had the leadoff man on the last four innings. They scored one run in the second, one in the third, didn't score in the fourth, and now have a good opportunity here in the fifth. Swing and a miss, over to one on Chapman. Popped up into shallow left. Rojas out, he gives way to Taylor, the left fielder, two down. Sign of Dave Roberts, so it looks like Gonsolin is going to stay to face Whit Merrifield, who's had a sack fly and he's also struck out. Yeah, this is probably going to be the last batter that Gonsolin will face with the left hander ready in the bullpen. The next batter is Dalton Varsho, left handed hitter, so I'm thinking that he's getting close to the end of his outing. And 
and that catches the top of the zone 0 and 1. The starts they get out of Urias and Gonsolin are so important because the other three spots are occupied by rookies right now though you imagine they'll rectify that situation with a trade or two between now and the deadline. Going to the count on Merrifield. And Gonsolin's had a very good split finger pitch today. And this ball sent to left field and deep. And how about that? Whit Merrifield just hit a three run homer to left field here at Dodger Stadium to extend the lead to five to nothing. Now Gonsolin had thrown a lot of good splitters and this one wasn't quite what he wanted and obviously the results are very good for the Blue Jays as Merrifield connects for his seventh home run his fourth RBI of the day a three run shot or oh, five nothing that looks pretty good for the Blue Jays and Merrifield he's had quite a run here in L.A. he had a four hit game on Monday he had a sack fly in his first hit bat and now he hits a three run home run here in the fifth on an 0 2 pitch Buck he hit that three run homer. That's the kind of hit they haven't gotten as consistently as that they would like a couple of men on two down are you going to get something or not that is a huge hit for the Blue Jays. No, it sure is and that was a splitter and it just stays up and he was able to get it and Gonsolin left it right over the heart of the plate an 0 2 pitch and Mayfield knew he got enough of it and that ball carried out of here. Well, that's a good feeling for Merrifield. You can see him just walk out of the batter's box knowing he got enough of it to hit it into the seats in left. Well, we haven't seen a whole lot of three run home runs lately. Mm -hmm. So it is five to nothing here in the fifth inning. And there are some Blue Jay fans here again, maybe just a few hundred of them, but they are making themselves heard right now. Not nearly the crowd here today that they had here the last couple of nights over forty seven thousand each of the last two nights maybe half that today. Everybody's gone to the beach. <laughs> <laughs> the three two to our show. And that's in there for strike three call. But Whit Merrifield has made it a five to nothing game as we send you back to the studio for an update with Jamie Campbell. All right, Dr. Fans, it's time for the food truck race. A couple of times in the last couple of days, starting pitching has been the most consistent strength of this team this year, and it's among the very best in the American League since June the first. That's going back almost two months. Yeah, they have really been good and basically all season long. The Blue Jays here, all right, just couple of points behind the Guardians ahead of the Mariners and the Orioles. So I think the one thing is they have pitched the fifth most innings in baseball as starters as a unit and you know you say he's doing his job and Barrios has turned his fortunes around from last year. Bassett and Gosman they're just steady Eddie they come and give you good effort every time they go to the mound. Austin Barnes had a base hit his first time up. So it's Barnes then back to the top of the order for Betts and Freeman here in the bottom of the fifth. Seven strikeouts through four for Kikuchi. And the sliders in there often goes to a slider when he's behind two and oh three and one. Usually it seems like he feels more comfortable that he can throw a strike with the slider than the fastball sometimes. Yeah we talk about how many strikes he throws with that slider he gets a lot of swings and misses and gets a lot of cold strikes with the slider and it's it's really improved with the addition of that curveball because the curveball gives him another dimension in velocity. He's always had a great fastball. He's battled back to two and two against Barnes and he hit him. And look at the look on Kikuchi's face. You got a guy hitting 112, and you got him into a two strike count, and you hit him to put him on. 
Yeah, Barnes has been on base twice, and obviously as the number nine hitter, you want to keep him off the base before these big bats come up. Uh, there's another slider. He held on to a two ball on the inch. Barnes right in the back side. So now you got to deal with the top of the order again. Betts has singled and walked. Mookie Betts three for 11 with a couple of walks so far in the series. And that misses down and in with the slider. One ball, one strike. Back and now Kikuchi out in front, one and two. Yeah, for the third start in a row, Kikuchi has thrown a high percentage of strikes uh, with his fastball, with his slider, and his curveball, and the fact that he's throwing a lot of strikes gets this Dodger team to swing. John Snyder talked about the approach of the Dodgers, how they make it throw it over, and both he and Pete Walker have to be pleased with what they've seen once again from Kikuchi. Just got the big three run homer from Merrifield and Kikuchi not wanted to give any of that back here in the bottom of the fifth. He'll have to navigate his way through the top of the order. And Betts takes it down and in and it's a full count. Three two. Foul back. Feels like a big inning doesn't it it's a five run game and it's just the midway point of the game really but this feels like a big inning for the Blue Jays chances today because where the Dodgers are in their lineup they've got Betts and then Freeman J.D. Martinez big bats. Yeah you get through this inning and you don't allow them to go too deep in the lineup you might not have to face this part of the lineup again until the seventh. Three two again and it is ball four just high and now without the benefit of a base hit the first two Dodgers have reached now that breaking ball was just a little bit too high and the Blue Jays they lost Don Mattingly because of a high strike it looked like it was up out of the strike zone called the strike by Ben May the home plate umpire but Gucci didn't get the call with that high slider. Well, and as we mentioned on the first night of the series the Dodgers are a disciplined team they are second in the majors in drawing walks they won't help you and they will get your pitch count up Freddie Freeman has singled and struck out. Kikuchi starts him with a fastball in for a strike. And Freeman hits lefties as well as he hits righties. He hangs in there. He hits the ball to straightaway center to left center with a ton of authority. He bounces one to short to second one on to first in time double play. You say Kikuchi has taken his game to another level. And he's not getting rattled, and that was an issue where things started to unravel on him before, and he would make bad pitches. Look at that pitch. 96, bottom of the zone, and he gets the ground ball to Bishit. Kevin coming across the back, fires in plenty of time to first base. Oh, that's a huge pitch by you say Kikuchi. Two big double plays the last two innings. And here's JD Martinez. He has struck out in both of his at bats today. Well, and he's doing it good. She's doing it. Get one of the best offensive teams in baseball. 
Dodgers are among the leaders in many offensive categories. And J.D. Martinez hasn't had any fun facing Kikuchi so far today. He struck out both times he's faced him. Boy, everybody knew the importance of this game based on what happened last night, and everybody knew what the Blue Jays would be asking for and hoping to get out of Yusei Kikuchi, and so far he is delivering. Yeah, he's at 87 through four and two thirds, but he's made the pitches he has had to make when the Dodgers have had threats going. Factor in the quality of the opponent, the heat, everything else going on. This has been an outstanding effort so far. Shallow right field, and it is caught by Springer, shielding his eyes from the sun. He makes the catch, and you say Kikuchi is through five scoreless innings. Baseball coming your way tonight. You can watch the Subway Series. The Mets of the Yankees at 7 o'clock Eastern Time, 4 p.m. Pacific Time. Those two teams met last night, and the Mets won easily. 9 to 3. Pete Alonso had a big game. So the Yankees at the moment, two and a half back of the Blue Jays in the wild card race. As Tony Gonsolin's day has officially come to a close. Five innings, five runs, three of them scoring on the Whit Merrifield home run. Yeah, and we mentioned coming into this game over his last six games, his ERA was up near seven, and it's not going to be lowered at all. Five innings, five earned runs, three walks, and Bucha's got two in. And how about Whit Merrifield? He's had a four RBI game, the sack fly in the second, a three run home run in the fifth, and now the Dodgers will send. Alex Bessia to the mound his first appearance in his three game series 32nd game of the season for the lefty and the first batter he will face is Danny Jansen Jansen today has flied out and struck out came into the game with a 953 OPS over his last 26 games. As John Schneider said about him before the game you know he's always the same he, he knows what he needs to do now to be successful he's got holes like everybody but he is trying to pull the ball and hit it hard and he has done a very good job doing that in recent weeks. Yeah and I know we're in the sixth inning he's leading off here but he had that big hit in the ninth inning last night that gives him 16 RBIs in the ninth inning or later that's the most such RBIs in baseball. More than Shohei Otani. Dalton Varsho has 12 of those late inning RBIs. So Danny has been clutch for the Blue Jays and has pushed his RBI total up to 44. And this ball sent to deep left, and it is gone. He has done it again. Number 13 on the season for Danny Jansen. It is six to nothing. Well, Danny got on top of that high fastball, and he turned it loose. He homered on Friday night in Seattle on a first pitch fastball it was against Bryce Miller. Yeah, he jumped all over this pitch, hit a bullet just over the fence in left field. And he continues to drive in runs for the Blue Jays. Second home run of the game for Toronto. You know, this is one of these funny spots. Like Jansen normally hits seventh or eighth. But the way he's going right now, you wonder if there's some internal conversation about moving him up in the order. I mean, he has just been so consistent and so productive. Yeah, and and you made a great point about John Snyder and his belief in Danny. Danny doesn't change his approach no matter where you hit him in the lineup. That might not be a bad idea. And the lineup construction is always a topic of discussion among the manager and the coaches. How they can generate more consistent offense. Now Kevin Biggio gives one a ride to center but a back to make the play is Outman and that's one down. This is such a pretty swing that Danny Jansen put on this pitch. We're going to look at it again. And he hit a liner into the seats in left field. And Danny, he's a strong kid, and he's swinging the bat with a lot of confidence right now. 
And George Springer hearing it again from the crowd here at Dodger Stadium. George is 0 for 3 today, 1 for here for 21 now on the road trip. For a called strike to even it up. Yeah, and Springer didn't like that call. But that was down and away. You know, I had a talk with Dave Roberts on Friday afternoon for the first game of this series about lineup construction and how players kind of react to moves, and he said. Managers don't make out the lineup. The hitters do. And where you hit and how you hit will be determining just how the manager makes out that lineup. And you make a great point about Danny Jansen. You know, he's been so productive. I mean, he's the best on the Blue Jays team at, at bats per RBIs. He has fewer RBIs per bat than anybody, and fewer at bats per RBI than anybody on the Blue Jays. And you know, Whit Merrifield's swinging the bat really well right now. He's been a leadoff hitter before and has hit leadoff in this series. Maybe you put him up there for a while and drop George down into the lineup. Just something that's always a topic of conversation among the coaches and the managers. The 3 2. And Springer gets under it and pops it into shallow left. Taylor in to make the catch. Another point of conversation about the line of construction. Remember last year when Snyder put Bo into the seventh spot? Yes, just for one day. Yeah, yeah. Bo, Bo wasn't swinging the bat all that well. He went down to seven, but then he hit maybe five or six a couple of times too, and then he hit his way back up in the Absolutely. lineup. Absolutely, got back up to where he should be. And you know, at the way you swing the bat will have a lot to do with what the manager does as far as the lineups. Oh, obviously entrenched in that two spot with the way he's swinging the bat this season. He is two for three today, went four for six last night. And did not play, did not start on Monday night, came in as a pinch hitter in the ninth and had two at bats. Now, third in the American League in batting. He uh, lost a few points off the average in the few days before. Last night, Masataki Yoshida of the Red Sox is hitting 320. Yandi Diaz of the Rays 318, and then Bo at 315. The Blue Jays have had just one batting champion, right? John Olerud in 1993. Yeah, and that's a bit of a surprise given the fact they had so many good hitters, but they had one, two, three in the batting race that year. Inside corner, two and two. Andy Jansen, Pete Walker, going over their notes, talking about where Kikuchi is, where he's been good again. And strike three called, and Bichette knew it. So the inning is over, but Danny Jansen has added to the lead, launching one to left, his 13th home run of the season. And the Blue Jays now are up six to nothing. Giveaway is coming your way on August the second. The first 15,000 fans of the ballpark will receive a Chris Bassett camo jersey T-shirt presented by Jeep. Visit BlueJays.com/tickets. Matt, you could wear that hunting, but you couldn't wear it hunting when you're going for Blue Jays. <laughs> it's got a Blue Jay on there. It'd be a big tip off. <laughs> You say Kikuchi with a six to nothing lead, but the first pitch here in the bottom of the sixth is lined in the left field corner by Chris Taylor. And it rolls around down on the corner for a while, but Merrifield gets it back in to hold Taylor to a double. Taylor had struck out in his previous two at bats against Kikuchi and trying to elevate that fastball. You see, it's just 93 down from. But he's been 96 consistently in this game. He's just trying to throw a strike, and Taylor made him pay. For Taylor, that's just his ninth double of the season. Lead off 
double here in the sixth. Max Muncy is 0 for 2, a ground out and a strikeout. You know, you get the feeling if this were a, I mean, they're, they're all the same, but if this were a normal game, if last night hadn't happened, if the bullpen hadn't been so taxed, that maybe there'd be activity in the bullpen right now, as well as Kikuchi is pitching. I mean, you can make a case he was even sharper than this against Seattle in his last start than he is today. And he's been good today, but again, that shot right there. That tells you that they're pushing him a little bit harder. Today. Yeah, and uh, rightly so. Uh, he's been good today. He's allowed no runs on six hits and pitched out of some early jams. He stranded five base runners in the first two innings. And to me, that was the turning point for his start. He was able to put up a couple of zeros early in the game after the Dodgers got base runners on. Bases loaded in the second, they couldn't score. The one two and lifted the left lots of room on this one for Merrifield in and over to the line he makes the catch one down. Again Kikuchi as we've mentioned this year has done a terrific job of stranding base runners. And he stranded the base run last inning and the Dodgers have left six on so far. So he is really focused, even though he gives up a leadoff double, gets the first out after that double, and now he'll face Kike Hernandez who had an infield hit his last time up. One for two on the afternoon in his return to the Dodgers. Boy, Danny Jansen and Kaguchi have done a great job of mixing their pitches very effectively. That was a good curveball to start the at bat. And all Hernandez could do was foul it off. Rounded out to second, up with it, Biggio. The out is recorded, two down as Taylor goes to third, and we go to Arden. Well, just to reinforce Dan's point about the bullpen, let's look at the usage of late. The blue are the pitches thrown in the last three days, and the white are the pitches thrown in last night's game. The Blue Jays have five relievers in their bullpen who've appeared in two of the club's last three. Eric Swanson thrown 47 pitches. Yanis Cabrera, 42. Trevor Richards, 37. A lot of tired arms out there, Dan. Absolutely. And with the off day tomorrow and with maybe a six man rotation coming after that we don't know you know there's going to be some extra rest for Kikuchi before his next start. And now the first sign of activity in the bullpen Trevor Richards is getting loose. Kikuchi nearing 100 pitches his season high is 101. Soft liner to left and it is trapped by Merrifield. So in to score on the play is Taylor on an RBI single by Outman and it is six to one. Yeah Whit made a good attempt at that ball he came in charged and made a sliding attempt but he did trap it as Outman gets an RBI single up for his second of the game. And that was a tough pitch that Outman hits on the line to left field then Merrifield comes in and tries to make a Sliding catch, but you can see he short hopped it and threw it right back to infield very quickly. So the Dodgers are on the board here in the sixth. And a pitch outside ball one to Miguel Rojas. You got to really be aggressive to Rojas, and if he continues the inning, then to Barnes, and they might even pinch hit for Barnes if he gets up with two on. Rojas right for two. Guy. Yep. Excuse me, Dan. You got to really challenge this guy to hit the ball. You can't walk him. You've got a five run cushion. He's the number eight hitter in this lineup. No power. So go right after him. He takes a strike and it's two and one. Even 100 now for Kikuchi. And again, season high is 101. Missed away three and one.
you don't want to do it but you know if you're John Schneider Pete Walker you're counting outs already you're you're looking at combinations and permutations and every out that Kikuchi can get you is so big and really they just need this one more they just want this one last out from him this inning he's over his season high in pitches already but they do not want this getting back around to Mookie Betts here this inning. now and the bullpen will face Mookie Betts and Freeman the next time they come to the play but you'd love to have this inning come to an end right now. Runner is going and a swing and a miss he got him. What a job this afternoon by Yusei Kikuchi. Six very strong innings here in Los Angeles and every now and again you say lets you know he's feeling pretty good about it. First is the next Looney Dogs night presented by Schneider celebrate the dog days of summer with some one dollar dogs at the ballpark visit bluejays.com slash tickets today. It is a hot day and some folks are just catching as many rays as they can here at Dodger Stadium. The Blue Jays up six to one going to the top of the seventh. Again an outstanding job by Yusei Kikuchi today. Little nachos out of a Dodger nacho helmet there as Dave Roberts has gone to a new pitcher just called up for the minors today right hander Tyson Miller. Yeah Miller has appeared in just 13 major league games he was acquired earlier in July from the Milwaukee Brewers. He throws a fastball slider curveball and a sinker occasional changeup but not many. His fastball will just average over 90 miles an hour not overpowering by any means. Swinging to miss by Belt, it's 0 and 2. And a fly ball to shallow left. Taylor in for the first out. <laughs> Well it was Trevor Richards but then after you say Kikuchi finished off the bottom of the six now clearly it's going to be Jay Jackson coming on bottom seven. Well he had a terrific outing on Monday. Two innings he had a walk struck out two through twenty five pitches. He retired the top of the order bets Freeman and Smith in order in the ninth inning. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. is two for three a base hit to left a base hit to right and he's also scored a couple of runs today. And Miller doesn't get the call there it's one and one on Vladdy. And this one is sent to left field towards the corner and on the track Taylor makes the catch two down. Vladdy was just out in front of that ball a bit. He was fooled by the lack of speed and it looked like a breaking ball that stayed inside and you can see he hits it high but it doesn't have the distance. So now Matt Chapman looks at a breaking ball in for a strike. Chapman today has doubled, walked, and flied out to left. Six runs, eight hits for the Blue Jays, one run, seven hits for the Dodgers. Two big home runs for the Blue Jays. Whit Merrifield, Danny Jansen. The power and the pitching the story for the Blue Jays this afternoon popped up Freddie Freeman battling the sun makes the catch and Miller retires the Blue Jays in order seventh inning stretch here at Dodger Stadium Blue Jays six and the Dodgers one. A 
very strong effort out of Yusei Kikuchi today, and Buck, the Blue Jays got it. But they sure did, and it started out in a rocky situation. Betts and Freeman both singled to start the game, but then he struck out J.D. Martinez, Kirsten Taylor, and over the course of the game, Kikuchi never, ever blinked. He gets Martinez on a couple of good curveballs, and Taylor on a high fastball. Freddie Freeman whiffed a curveball. There's another curveball strike out of Martinez. The slider was very good for Kikuchi again today. He was in the strike zone, threw over 100 pitches, but boy, oh boy, was that what the Blue Jays needed. You say Kikuchi's been real good his last several starts. And a guy who's been real good out of the bullpen for the Blue Jays, and it looks like he might kind of now be here to stay. I mean, he's been up and down a couple of times, but Jay Jackson has really been very solid for the Blue Jays. Look at those numbers. Yeah, very good numbers, and his whip is just 0.5, and opponents hitting under 100 against him. And he mentioned his terrific out in here on Monday night. He handled a top three in the order in quick fashion. Austin Barnes will lead off the bottom of the seventh. Mookie Betts on deck. Freddie Freeman behind him. Jay Jackson, 14 innings, only four hits allowed, three walks, 13 strikeouts. And a very good slider. Yeah, well, when the Blue Jays were making a move, they decided that Jackson has been consistent and reliable, and they decided to send Nate Pearson down to see if he couldn't get better command of his breaking pitches. O2. And he got him. Swings over the top of the slider, one down. Boy, he's got a very good slider. It's a breaking ball that he's confident in. He'll throw it any time in the count, no matter if he's ahead or behind. And look at the break on this thing. It's in a great spot, lands right on the outside corner. It's got pretty good velocity to it. 85 miles an hour on that slider. So now Mookie Betts, who has a base hit, and he's also walked twice, so he's been on base all three times. Mookie, not the biggest guy in the world, about 5'9", 175, but he's got 27 home runs, one of the best all-round players in the game. And a guy with a, a bit of an unusual swing in terms of his finish, the way he does or does not wrap the bat around. And as he sends this one to center, Varsho's got room. And a number of people inside the Blue Jays organization after the drafting of Arjun Namala have said, you know what? Look at his swing and look at Mookie Betts' swing. Do you see the similarities? Yeah, watch the finish on the left is Namala, and he holds that bat. It's very similar to what Mookie Betts does. You watch the high finish, and Betts doesn't really go all the way around with that bat. And it kind of, it's almost like a golf swing, how he just finishes it up like that high. It works for Betts, and hopefully Namala can take that swing right into the big leagues. Yeah, I think Arjun Namala would sign up for a Mookie Betts career if that was his destiny. We'll see, he's just 17 years old, but obviously loaded with potential. And it'll be interesting to track his future in the next few years down in the Blue Jays system. Two down for Freddie Freeman. in there two and one and he gets the call down at the knees two and two now on Freddie Freeman Freddie didn't like it Freddie doesn't say a whole lot he is not somebody to to argue but he thought that one is low and you can see he's got a pretty good case but it is two and two you see the Blue Jays trying to go to that hole on the inside part of the plate that fastball upstairs Freddie is much better than a major league average with two strikes at 241.
Again, the 2 2. And fouled off. Well, so far, a very nice response from the Blue Jays in the wake of that tough defeat last night. It all started with Yusei Kikuchi getting out of some jams early. And then really that Whit Merrifield home run was just a, a monster of a hit for the Blue Jays. A three run shot. Uh, speaking, of, speaking of Merrifield he'll make the catch. And Jay Jackson sets down the Dodgers in order in the bottom of the seventh. Let's get a Blue Jays Central update right now with Jamie and Madison. Let's get a safe affordable ride to and from home base. With you can watch the A's and the Giants. The Giants try to keep pace with the Dodgers in the National League West. They're four back at the moment. That game tonight on Sportsnet One and also streaming live on Sportsnet Now. On this hot afternoon here in L.A., it's the top of the eighth inning right now, and the Blue Jays leading six to one. And the guy with the biggest hit of the day is up. You just heard Madison talking about it back in the studio with Jamie Whit Merrifield with a three run home run in the fifth. He's got four RBIs on the day had a sack fly back in the second. Breaking ball there from Miller, one and two. Yeah, Miller had a one, two, three, seventh inning, and he has just joined his team today. You mentioned this is just his 14th big league game. Out in front of Merrifield, one and two. And a breaking ball misses in. After Witt, it'll be Dalton Varsho and then Danny Jansen. Fights it off. Witt has four RBIs, as we mentioned. It's the third game this season in which he's driven in four. His RBI total up to 46 now. Full count. Nothing doing by the way in the Blue Jay bullpen at the moment. So it looks like Jay Jackson who has shown the ability frequently to go more than an inning would will come back out to at least start the bottom of the eighth. In case you're wondering which career high in RBIs in the game came back in 2019 with the Royals. He drove in six runs with two home runs, had three hits and four at bats, and a nine nothing win for Kansas City over Seattle. He's also had two five Ruby games in his career. And He's he hot. yeah lines one softly into right. He has been a great two strike hitter this year, and he's got he homered on an 0-2 pitch. Back in the fifth, and now he singles on a 3 2 pitch here in the eighth. Yeah, and you know what? With Witt, it's all about bat control. That ball was off the plate outside, but with two strikes, he was confident just to put the bat on a bomb. He's rewarded with another hit. He's two for three. Swinging the bat well. So he's aboard to lead off the inning, and here's Dalton Varsho. Varsho has walked twice, and then he was called out on strikes, so officially 0 for 1. You know you like where they're where they are right now up six to one but given the way things have gone at times on this road trip. Blue Jays would love to get a few more before yeah. they can feel comfortable. Nobody's going to be relaxed until they're in the clubhouse. Having a post game beverage after a hot afternoon. Mm -hmm. Merrifield takes a step and stops and then Varsho swings and lifts a fly ball to left. Taylor there one down. So now Danny Jansen who last time up did what he's been doing on a fairly regular basis lately Buck. This home run is his 13th of the season his second on the road trip and it was a low liner into the seats in left field. 
And a first pitch home run Friday night in Seattle. Another very hard hit low line drive into the seats in Seattle against the Mariners. Danny's last 27 games he is slugging over 600 that is a big number. You know, it's funny for whatever reason throughout you know, people like you and me and fans media everybody talk about contracts this guy's got two more years this guy's a free agent after this year whatever it is. You never Danny Jansen's contract or service time never seems to be a, a topic at all. He's our, he's in his arbitration years right now. He's eligible for free agency after next season. But wouldn't it be nice if maybe one day we woke up to the news that Danny Jansen had signed whatever a three year deal or something to remain a Blue Jay a little bit longer. I mean he is so important to this team. Yeah he really is and it's a position where they don't have an awful lot of depth and he's rock solid for the Blue Jays in many aspects. Swing and a miss here as Miller gets him. Celebrating home runs at Boston Pizza. Your buds, baseball, and BP. The perfect trifecta. Well, the announced attendance is 46,667. That is tickets sold. But as Buck said, obviously a lot of people made a wrong turn and went to the beach today on this 95 degree day because uh, there might be a third of that actually here. The Blue Jay fans who came to town to see baseball, they, they're seeing baseball. But a lot of the Dodger fans look like they are enjoying a, a hot summer day somewhere. This one's lined up the middle. Good contact for Kevin Biggio. And that'll push Merrifield up to second. Well, Cavan put a nice swing on that pitch. He just stayed on it and drives it into center field. He's one for three. And hit by a pitch his first time up and scored a run. And now George Springer again. He is 0 for 4. Blue Jay fans trying to do what little they can to counter the booing that Springer has been hearing during the series from Dodger fans. I think at a couple of levels, Buck George is going to be very happy to get back to Toronto. Yeah, I agree with you. And, you know, it's a tough road trip for him. He, he just hasn't been swinging the bat the way he did earlier in the season. I think that turned around. You know this game is very challenging and it's very difficult. They play every day. You see different pitchers every day, and you've got to try to put a good swing on the baseball. And sometimes your timing is off, and you're going through tough stretches. Of course, George has acknowledged that. And coming into this series, Bo Bichette was 0 for 18. He had an offer in his previous five games, and then he's turned things around. The count two and one with two on and two down here in the Blue Jays' eighth. And that one is going to get past Barnes. Miller with a wild pitch, and the runners can easily advance. Now we mentioned that Miller just joined this ball club, so I'm sure Austin Barnes hasn't. Caught him before and probably didn't have any idea about what pitches he throws. He just overpowered that fastball, threw it right past the catcher. It's a wild pitch. The guys will move up. So, two in scoring position and a favorable count for Springer. He fouls it off. It's now three and two. Bobachet would be next. He's got a couple of hits today. Now to play. Off day tomorrow for the Blue Jays. The Angels come to town on Friday. And then the Orioles for a four-gamer starting on Monday. 
And again, all we know is the Blue Jays will send Gosman, Manoa, Barrios to the mound in the weekend series against the Angels. Did not go, and that's ball four, and that is going to load the bases for Bichette. And that'll bring Mark Pryor out of the Dodger dugout again. Miller just called up today, and with the Dodgers trailing by five, that's the kind of spot that he's finding himself in. And again, six to one's a good spot. But if Bo Bichette could add to that lead, everybody on the first base side of the field in that dugout would feel a whole lot better. Well, absolutely. And they have played a lot of tight games throughout the course of the first five games of this West Coast swing. And John Snyder, he's had some tough losses late in ball games on this trip. But a win here today would make it three and three on a road trip. And I think everybody would say, okay, that's not bad. West Coast. It's always challenging for these teams on the East to come all the way out here. And Bichette lines one into left a base hit. Merrifield is home. Biggio's on his way. He will score. They got Springer hung up and he'll just concede. But it's a two run single for Bichette. And it is now eight to one for the Blue Jays. Bichette's third hit of the afternoon gives them a bigger margin here right now as they are now up by seven. Boy, all of a sudden, Bo is locked in again. He is now seven for 11 in his last two games and two big runs to add to the lead. Reminder about the homestand coming up three with the Angels and then four with the American League East Division leading. Baltimore Orioles start Monday night running through Thursday afternoon. Come on down to the ballpark. You can get your tickets at bluejays.com slash tickets. Jay Jackson is back out for the bottom of the eighth in what is now an eight to one game. J.D. Martinez will lead it off for the Dodgers. Martinez 0 for 3 with a couple of strikeouts. Jay Jackson has had an outing of two and two thirds earlier this season. That was in a losing effort against Houston back on the 5th of June. He threw 39 pitches, also a season high. So there's a chance they could just go with Jay the rest of the way if he keeps throwing strikes. Tim Mays is up in the bullpen right now for the Blue Jays. Two and two the count on Martinez. And the slider misses down and away a full count. And he got a big swing and a miss there. And that's the first out here, bottom eight, as Martinez strikes out for the third time today. Second strikeout for Jackson. He's retired all four Dodgers he's faced since coming into this ball game, and he's got a good start. And he's able to get it past JD Martinez. And Martinez missed a couple games with a hamstring issue, but he homered in last night's game in the eighth inning, and today has been a different story. Chris Taylor is one for three doubled and scored the only run of the day for the Dodgers in the sixth inning. The Dodgers are off tomorrow as well. They will stay home and welcome the Cincinnati Reds to town over the weekend and they get another off day Monday and another home series. 
against Oakland. So this is just the first three games of a nine game homestand for L.A. As they try to hold off the Diamondbacks and the Giants in the NL West. Yeah the Dodgers coming out of the All Star break had a nine game road trip to the East Coast. So they're happy to be home for a while enjoy a couple of off days. They finish with seven of their last eleven against the Giants. Blue Jays finish with their last 12 in a row against the Rays and the Yankees. And of course with the Blue Jays being here this year that means the Dodgers are in Toronto next year. That's the way the new schedule works. The Dodgers will be in Toronto at the end of April a weekend series next April. That'll be fun. Yeah, they're always a big attraction. They've always got big name players, and it's always fun to see them, whether you're playing here at Dodger Stadium or on the road. The appeal, and yes, he did, says Jeff Nelson. Another strikeout for Jackson. Up next for the Blue Jays is the Friday night series opener against the Angels. Trust us, that's Kevin Gosman. Take our word on that. You can see from here. And he will be the starter Friday night. And a reminder that that is part of MLB's package of games on Apple. So we will not have that game for you. You can listen to it on the Sportsnet Radio Network as always. But it's on Apple Friday night. We'll be back with you on Saturday. And it's going to be an interesting homestand with the Angels there and then the four game series with the Orioles. And obviously, that's exactly who the Blue Jays want to play right now. The division leading Baltimore Orioles. Max Muncy, the batter. The Orioles have a couple of their outfielders on the I.L. Cedric Mullins, and most recently, Aaron Hicks just went on. And a whole bunch of young players in their roster right now, and they've got some good, exciting young players. And yeah. some of the veterans have played well. Feels like you see a Gunnar Henderson cool highlight every day when you're watching an Orioles game. They're up three to nothing on the Phillies in the third inning of that game right now. Yeah, isn't it interesting how they don't talk an awful lot about Adley Rutschman anymore because you're talking about the younger oh, guys. Got a new flavor of the month. <laughs> And there are more coming. The Orioles are not going away. And that's up and away ball four as Muncie takes a walk. Baltimore is 62 and 39. And leading the division. They've actually got the best record in the American League. Yeah, before they come to you. Toronto, they'll entertain and welcome in the New York Yankees in a three game series. It starts Friday night. Grayson Rodriguez, Tyler Wells, and Dean Kramer, the scheduled pitchers for the Warriors, Mark Smith, Derek Cole, and Luis Severino for the Yankees. Here's Kike Hernandez, one for three in his return to the Dodgers, had an infield hit in the fourth inning. Swing and a miss at the slider. I think Jay Jackson's days of going back and forth between Toronto and Buffalo are over for a while, Buck, the way that he's pitching right now. No, I agree with you, man. He's thrown a lot of strikes. He hasn't given up any hits at all. He just pounds that strike some with that slider, pitch after pitch, and it's a good one. And Jay, he's not a youngster. He's 35 years old. He's bounced around a bit. Even pitched in Japan. And again, the ability to go seemingly comfortably go more than one inning. He's he's what he's doing today. He's done this a lot already. Yeah, we mentioned he had a two and two thirds outing against the Astros and threw 39 pitches. But now we're seeing him pitch in games with the Blue Jays having the lead. When they first joined the team, he was kind of a mop up guy. They just sent him out there when they were down, but that's not the case any longer. A ball and two strikes to count on Hernandez. 
And with the addition hopefully of Chad Green relatively soon he's now had two good appearances down on rehab in the minor leagues. That would you know, strengthen the bullpen even more. That's a if he is himself that's a guy who for many years with the Yankees was kind of in this kind of a role maybe not necessarily a closer but you could pitch him all over you know, mid innings for two later in the game for one. And a guy who got big outs in high leverage situations. Yeah and he's the guy Chad Green is the guy that you can use say in the sixth inning when you're at the top of the order with the good batters coming up and he's not your closer but he can give you a closing type situation earlier in the game. If there's tough hitters out. Yeah, he would be a welcome addition to this bullpen. Eight one Blue Jays bottom eight. And the 2 2. Outside, a full count now on Hernandez, so Muncie will be on the move. And Guerrero trying to get the attention of Jackson to let him know, I think, that he's going to play behind the runner. We'll see where Vladdy plays. I don't think Jackson ever heard him, but Vladdy backs up behind Muncie. There he goes. And the 3 2 is lined in the left, a base hit. Merrifield will cut it off. Muncie around a third on a long single by Hernandez. Well, Jackson left that breaking ball up a little bit, and DK Hernandez in his first game back with the Dodgers gets his second hit of the ball game. And now the left handed hitter Outman is up there, and Don Snyder's got Tim Mays already down in the bullpen, so he's not going to. Wait any longer, he'll bring Macy in to face Hapman, who's had a good series against the Blue Jays. So a couple of men on the Blue Jays up 8-1. Mesa try to end this inning right here. At Green, who Dan Schulman was mentioning earlier. Green, of course, spent for seven seasons of his MLB career with the New York Yankees, pitched to a 3-1-7 ERA over 272 appearances, struck out nearly 12 per nine. He's a guy who in his hay had a big 95, 96 mile per hour fastball and a hammer of a curveball that generated really big whiff rates. And he is on the way back, as Dan mentioned. He's made two rehab outings now in his first. First one, he was mainly throwing his fastball, dialed it up to 95, and then in the second rehab outing, his most recent one, really incorporated the curveball a lot more often, struck out a hitter with it, so that's really encouraging to see. He's still got quite a bit to go in this process of coming back from Tommy John, but the clock has begun on his rehab, and it's going to run through August 20th, so one way or another could be impacting the Blue Jays within the next month. All right, Arden, thank you. Yeah, you, it, it still feels like there will be some moves coming. The trade deadline is coming. Hyunjin Ryu is imminent, it would seem. But at some point, and the sooner the better, as you well know, Buck, you want to get your best 13 on there for the stretch drive. Yeah, for sure. And you mentioned 13, obviously. 13 pitchers and 13 position players on your 26 man roster. Outman sends one to center field. Varsho comes in to make the catch, and Tim Meza makes quick work of James Outman. To end the bottom of the eighth. The Blue Jays take on the Rays in Tampa in September. That's one of just, that's just one, forgive me, of 17 early bird prizes still up for grabs during the 50 50 Legends jackpot from Jays Care. The Blue Jays take it on the Rays down in Florida. Get your tickets from anywhere in Ontario. At bluejays.com slash 5050. Well, beautiful sunshine, a couple of cold drinks. The Blue Jays with an 8 to 1 lead as this one goes to the top of the ninth inning, and Phil Bickford is into the game now for the Dodgers. Bickford was charged with the loss on Monday, the opener of this series, as to be his 35th appearance of the season. He came into the game in the 11th inning and gave up the Double to Dalton Varsho and then walk Bo Bichette with the bases loaded. He was charged with three runs, just one earned run. And now Brandon Belt, first pitch swinging, drives Mookie Betts back to the track, but he'll make the catch, one down. But the Blue Jays can 
hold on and win this series. It'll snap a long run for the Dodgers of winning consecutive series as they have been a hot team. You know, Blue Jays won two, uh, won just the one game in Seattle, and uh, if they win two out of three, I think overall it'll be a, a satisfying trip. Although they had plenty of opportunities to win more games. Right, three and three coming out west when you're playing uh, a good team in Seattle and a very good team in the Dodgers. That's nothing to sneeze at, but you're right. I think the underlying feeling would be, well, it could have been this or it could have been that, but. You can't turn the clock back. All you can do is put it behind you, come out and play better the next day, and they have certainly done that today. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. is two for four. Yeah, this was a pretty important game for the Blue Jays, given the way they lost last night. They had a big three run inning in the top of the ninth, and then they gave up the lead and lost an extra innings, but they've come out swinging the bats well, and you say Kikuchi with a terrific outing. And Kikuchi really set the tone in that first inning after giving up back to back singles to start the inning. He was able to strand those base runners and stranded five base runners in the first two innings. Trevor Richards is going to come in for the bottom of the ninth. And again, this is one of these games that has. This kind of game hasn't happened all that much, so you know if it's two to one, three to one, four to one, you might have different guys. You might need to use a, a Swanson or a Romano more than you want to, and that's how you wind up with career highs and innings and appearances. But the offense doing the bullpen a big favor here today. No, no question about it. A, a big three-run home run by Whit Merrifield in the fifth inning, the turning point for this ball game, and Whit had a. Season high four RBIs. Geisman will open up things on Friday night against the Angels, and got it. It's went into center. Nice catch. Outman coming on. Boy, he's played well, and he's had a good series with the bat. Made some good defensive plays. Outman gets a good break on that sinking liner. Looked like Gladdy had a chance to get another hit. He had. Two hits early in the game. This time he's denied by a fine defensive play in center. Seventh round pick out of Sacramento State. I can imagine there are a few scouting directors on other teams who, who every now and again have gotten a question from their bosses saying, How come we didn't know about this guy? And that's a seventh round pick, and he looks like he's got all the skills in the world. Yeah, he grew up in the Bay Area of California, near San Francisco, and he went to Sacramento State, which has become a pretty good baseball team. Nathan Lucas is from Sac State. Reese Hoskins, of course. Matt Chapman, the batter. Chapman is one for three, had a double. He's also walked. Chapman, a California guy as well, but he went to Cal State Fullerton, and he was a first round pick back in 2014. Yeah, he grew up about 40 miles south of Los Angeles in Orange County. And he'll take another walk. Yeah, he's been on base three times today, had that booming double in the second inning. And then walked in the third, and he walks again here. And how about this day? With Merrifield, he had a Four hit game in this series, and now he's had a four RBI game in this series as well. And his parents are here to watch this. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. Yep, they have been traveling a lot. Uh, one of their goals is to see Whit Merrifield play in every park where they haven't been yet. I don't know, it's not just that. I don't know if they've been to LA before, but the Merrifields are popping up uh, in all kinds of unexpected places this year following their son around. Kind of fun. And Bickford's going to let it go, and it'll be met at the bag by Hernandez. He will force Chapman, and that'll retire the side. And it is on to the bottom of the ninth. 
get ahead after this series in L.A. The Blue Jays open up with the Angels again. Friday night is part of MLB's Apple TV package. We're back with you Saturday. Big four game series with the Orioles. The trade deadline is Tuesday and then off to Fenway Park to start the next road trip. Every single game is meaningful right now. Lots going on in the schedule of course and you know what he can't look past the Orioles to crunch the trainer. Red Sox Orioles are in first place. The Red Sox are playing good right now. And they've got some guys on the road to recovery that are going to join them probably before the middle of August. But it'll be an interesting time. The Jays will enjoy the off day tomorrow after this long and pressurized six game road trip. A pretty nice way to bounce back through eight and a half innings so far here today after the way the Blue Jays lost last night up eight to one. Yusei Kikuchi a big big part of the story today. Whit Merrifield a big part of the story. Danny Jansen is homer. Bo Bichette's got three hits and two RBIs. And Trevor Richards is on for the bottom of the ninth. Richards making his second appearance in this game. He pitched in the Open it on Monday night and give up a long home run to Max Muncy on a high changeup. So you want to get that changeup down bottom of the zone where it's most effective. You say Kikuchi, by the way, today lowered his ERA down to 379 this season. Changeup misses just inside. Yeah, big turnaround for Kikuchi, and you know what? You look at his ERA last year; it was over five at this point of the season. Then he would eventually lose his spot in the rotation and pitch the rest of the year out of the bullpen. Two-two. And that misses upstairs a full count. Popped foul out of play. Pretty eventful road trip. You could write a book about this road trip if you wanted to. You know? Absolutely. That's going on, huh? Swing and a miss, and Richards gets him one down. Yeah, when you go back to the Seattle series and the Blue Jays, they had a couple of opportunities to win it, and Tas Fernandez had a walk off hit on Saturday, and the Blue Jays would salvage the final game. Actually, his walk off hit was on Friday in the opener of that series. Yeah, there's a lot of Good moments. Danny Jansen had a home run in that series. Kikuchi pitched very well against Seattle. In the air to deep center, but Varsho's got room on the warning track as Austin Barnes is retired for out number two. You know, you it's just human nature. You just wondered. With such a quick turnaround after such a tough loss, how would they respond today? How would they look today? And again, baseball players are uniquely qualified in terms of turning the page and, and that sort of thing. Uh, they didn't score in the top of the first, went three up, three down. But then you say Kikuchi got out of some big situations and just inning by inning, the offense got better and better. And they, this was a good, clean baseball game played on all fronts by the Blue Jays. Yeah, and it was an important game, too. You're right. You know, if they kind of cry into beer over that game last night and come back out and lose this one today, it could turn into an ugly road trip. But they showed no signs of that. And credit you say Kikuchi because he set the tone for this game with the first two innings of the game and then the offense took it over. Yanni Hernandez is pinch hitting for Mookie Betts. And a call on the corner one and two and now they're a strike away. The Rays have lost. The Yankees are playing tonight. They're just getting going. 
As this one is bounced weakly to second, Biggio's got it, and the Blue Jays win the game eight to one and win the series. Take two out of three here at Dodger Stadium and finish up this wild road trip three and three to Seattle in L.A. And no doubt it will enjoy the flight home and enjoy an off day tomorrow before the Angels come to town. Yeah and they win a series against one of the best teams in baseball the L.A. Dodgers who had come off a six and three road trip of their own and the Blue Jays went two of three right here and you know a lot of good things happened today Dan as you mentioned the offense broke out. Eight runs on 11 hits, eight a couple of home runs. Whit Merrifield with his seventh, a three run shot. He had a four RBI game, and Danny Jansen continues to swing the bat with a lot of confidence. Overall, good game, and Bo Bichette has bounced back. He had seven hits in the series, and that's a great sign for the Blue Jays because Bo will never have a long, lingering slump, and he is back to top and swinging the bat very well. You say Kikuchi the win now eight and three Tony Gonsolin takes the loss the home runs for Merrifield and Jansen eight runs on 11 hits for the Blue Jays and a thorough convincing win here this afternoon to take two out of three. Again the final score of the Blue Jays eight and the Dodgers one let's send you to the wiser studio with Jamie and Madison.